Hello and welcome to the Absolute Beginner's Guide for Rhino. In this episode, we will be learning how to trace pictures and how to eventually turn those into stickers with the vinyl cutter. So first what we want to do is we want to type in the command picture to get a picture to trace. And then we want to click the top viewport because when we're in, all the time when we're, print, when we're tracing something, we want to have it in the top viewport. And then we go and turn on grid snap because we want to have our picture traced and snap to the grid and then we go ahead and turn it off because we want to trace we choose the curved line because as you guys can see this guy has a bunch of curved lines let me turn these guys off the O snap that snaps it in the middle and all over the picture because we don't need those when curve when tracing so what I want to do is I want to turn the color of my pencil to red so then it's visible that I'm tracing it. So then let's go ahead and trace. And then I just select these points. Selecting, selecting. Oops, I made a mistake. So what do I do? So then what you, what you want to do when you make a mistake is you hold control and then Z and then it undoes the dots, but you cannot do that once you hit enter and click off of the line. You can only do that while you are drawing the same line, because once you click off and you press Ctrl Z, it will delete the entire line or drawing that you have. So, I mean, or you could use a command called points, so if I go like this, and then I press enter, I can't control Z it, but what I can do is I can click this, the curve, and then I say point, points on in the command line, and then it turns on points, so then I can just grab this point, curve point, and then I can just drag it up to here, and then this guy, the same thing for this guy, curve point, and then I just drag it up. So then I can also do that as well. So what I want to do now is I want to grab my curve line, turn have end turned on, so then it snaps right into place to the line. So then I can just left, so I can just grab up where I left off. So what you want to do is you want to hold shift while drawing straight lines, and then right when it reaches this guy, you want to just click. So then the line just stops right here, and then, so now that we have half of this guy done, we can turn points off for now, points off. So then, we want to turn off the picture, and then we want to use the command called mirror, so then we select the entire thing, say command mirror, and then start of mirror. So then this is where I want to start my mirror with the end command and then I hold shift and then I pull the line down with shift. So then now I have this perfectly perpendicular line and now as you guys can see it did a perfect job. Not really perfect but I can use points and just drag it to the correct spot. And this is give and take the fastest way. It might be a bit sloppy, but you guys can just correct it with points, just like I'm doing. Curve point. And then, also, gumball is a really useful command. Because when you guys are using gumball, you just drag it, rather than just having to drag it with the mouse. This is, hands down, the easiest command, the, the, the most useful command in Rhino. If, if Gumball wasn't a thing, it would make Rhino way less useful than it is now. Keep moving, oops, keep moving the actual image rather than the points. Zoom in, drag it, oh, no. This is not what's intended, so. Curve point, move it up and down.
Uh, no, not so much. Okay, so this looks pretty clean. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the black layer. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty clean. So then now, oh, no, wrong one. Cancel. Turn the light back on. So then now what we want to do is we want to have the same red color, but then we want to use the polyline command, because as you guys can see, there's a bunch of sharp edges, so if you guys ever have like a half a circle or something, you guys could either use the trim command, or you can just draw half of the circle with the uh, curve command, and then do the rest with the polyline command. So you just go like this, and then I hold shift whenever I'm doing a straight line. Just so I get that extra precision. No. This is time to hold shift. But then now I can just hold shift. And just draw the line cleanly. And then this part, there's a bunch of poly, a bunch of curves. So I will just pause the video and come back after I get done with the boring stuff. As you guys can see, I got a lot of this stuff done off camera, but then I have a few tips to point out. So I'm going to go up ahead and turn the light back off and then, oops, no. If I go ahead and turn points on, points on for this demonstration. As you guys can see, when you guys are using the curve command, you have to have more than three dots in order to get a clean curve. Unless it's just gonna go like this, and that wouldn't look clean. So now I can just go ahead and turn points back off. Points off. And turn the light back on. So then, as you guys can see, it's a pretty clean curve. And the main reason is because I used more than three dots on the curve. So. I will go back and do some more stuff off camera. So I found this really key detail that should be a bit tricky in the top part of the helmet. So I thought I would do this while I'm recording just because you, if you guys want to retrace this exact drawing, I'll put the link in the description and I don't want you guys to struggle in this part. Because this part is a bit tricky. Because you guys need to use a lot of dots for these curves. Oops. It's a bit wobbly. Yep. And then what I want to do, what you want to do for this part is you want to have points on again. Because it's not going to get clean unless you use points to just adjust it. And when I turn the light off, it's pretty clean. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other parts, and yeah, I'll show any other struggling parts that you guys could struggle on, and I'll come and demonstrate them in the future. So I've gotten a lot done since the last clip, but just some tips that I needed to um, say about this part, like from just the inside part, like these two lines. This, this this thing in general like from all the way here so what you need to do here it's you need to switch a lot from polyline to curved line because this is a curve 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 and then curve and then straight and then curve curve more curves and then straight so it just needs you just need to know where to use curve and where to use the polyline command that's it and then something else that I needed to show was for these circles it's, you need to use a three-hole circle to get the most accurate circle. So, for three-hole circle, you have three spots to choose. And I always go like this, one over here, and then one over here. Because that way you get the most accurate circle. So then, instead of needing to draw it, you can just do that with the three-hole circle. Or the one-hole circle, but I just find it harder to do it with the one-dot circle. So I just do the three-dot circle. Because I just find it simpler. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn points off again. Points. Oh, no, uh, not on. Points off. Points off. Okay, good. And then now I click on it. And then I go 
control C, control V. And then, now there's two of the same one. So then now I can just go ahead and use the red arrow to just drag it here. And then just fix it up, center it, boom. Oh, nope, that's not centered. Probably need to zoom in for this operation. And boom. There you have two perfectly centered circles. So then the rest should be really easy because I only have the eyes and the breathing hole things. So I will probably back, be back with the finished project. So I'll see you then. Okay, so now I am done with my Darth Vader. So one of the things that was pretty weird was this part, this line that turns into a circle thing, the outside part. So it was this guy. So one of the challenges for that was to get the circle right. And I mean, I guess you could use the the trim command, but that would be kind of that would be kind of finicky. And this is the reason that I always tell people to use a mouse while doing CAD because doing mouse with a touchpad would be really hard and this is why I tell everybody to do CAD with a mouse and if you don't have a mouse get a mouse and it just makes a big difference to have a good quality mouse rather than a cheap one and even if you have a cheap one a cheap one is actually better than a trackpad so by all means go ahead and use that so how you guys would want to save this for saving it at, so you can put it on a USB stick and formatting it to the vinyl cutter is you save it as an Adobe Illustrator file, as an AI file, as people call it. So you would need to save it as an AI file. So you say Control S and then you save it. Instead of Rhino 3DM, you press the dro um, drop down button and then you just save it as AI. And you can also have a copy of the 3DM, Rhino 3DM version as well, just in case you want to make any changes to your sticker down the road. So, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Press the like button if you liked it. And subscribe for more content like this. And tell me how I could improve or what other tutorials I should put down in the comments. And I will see you in the next video.